guys welcome to today's video so today we are looking at a Winsor & Newton color it's called Davies Grey so we have kind of done a few um, videos in the color spotlight series quite a while ago and I really wanted to um, look at this color and compare it to a few other colors that I have that are similar it's a color that I've been really really enjoying this year um, and I just uh, find it hard to get my Wallace and Seymour um, like favorite one it's sort of an equivalent so I was looking at this one to see if this could um, you know also work so uh, yeah I hope you enjoy <music> Okay, so the first thing that we're doing is creating one of these color cards so I have a stack of these on my uh, desk and I when I was first starting watercolor I found these really really useful so this is kind of the way that I do them at the top here I put the name so in this case Davies Gray and then in the corner of this little um, top box I put just the initials of you know um, the company so in this case Windsor and Newton uh, in the corner box down the bottom here I put the pigment information so for this color there are it's actually made of four pigments um, and I'll talk a little bit about the history of this color I think in the beginning it really was made of powdered slate and it was actually called powdered slate um, but it's a really nice color in it with an interesting history as well so uh, we'll talk a little bit about that later on um, and then I put the light fastness here uh, indicated by stars so this is a double A so it's a five star light fastness and then I put a circle here if it's an open circle like that it's a very transparent color if it's a colored in circle it's an opaque color um, so then at the top here uh, we're just putting down the color in mass tone so kind of a strip at the top and this is the color not diluted with water it's the strongest application that you can get of that color so it's, this is not a very um, high staining color so um, yeah I needed a few you know I put I put a, a you know quite a few times if I need to to try and get the absolute strongest that I can get this color and you can see there that I just squeezed some out of the tube and um, also tried to uh, make that more saturated so the next thing I do in the middle here so you might be able to hear um, they're clapping for football in the background but the um, the the middle here is like a larger swatch with water and then um, we make a gradient wash here so um, yep and so the, the left side is darker and more saturated and then the right side uh, is lighter and there's more water and you'll also see that I add some water there you can add water you can lift off there you can um, create these gradient swatches a few different ways and um, then the last thing that we do here is just put a strip of water on the bottom and then take some pigment and drop that in and see this is a dispersion test so we see how far the watercolor will travel in the water like if it's a highly staining color it's probably going to explode into the water and cover that whole area you can see that this one doesn't move much and then once everything's dry I come back to the mass tone and see if I can lift that um, and then I also add another layer there to just uh, test out how it glazes as well and how um, you know how much deeper or richer you can get the color through glazing it as well okay so the next thing that we're going to do here is compare the um, color with a few other colors that are pretty similar as well so um, sorry I'm just trying to get the camera so um, 
Okay, so in the middle here we have the actual color. You can see this is the Davies Gray and I just, you can do these swatches a few different ways, but this one here is the Lichen and Sage from Earth Mineral Arts. So this is a beautiful rendition of this color as well. This is probably not as many pigments as well. I'm not exactly sure what pigments are in here, but um, so you can see this one's a little bit softer, a little bit greener. Um, but yeah, I really love uh, this version as well. And then we have, so let's see, what, what do we do next? So this is the one that I've been trying to um, find a replacement for as well. This is the Wallace and Seymour Honister Green Slate Pale Chris Green, something like that. So I have shown this over the years, so I love this color. It is hard to get, um, and I go through quite a lot of it, so that's why I was looking at the um, Davies Gray. So it is a pretty close comparison there, but you can see um, the Walls and Seymour one, I really love their paints because you do get those sort of extra granules. So this one here is my one. This is a jade, so it's just a one pigment jade mixed with um, pearlescent white. So technically you could um, mix the Davies Grey with the pearlescent white like by uh, Daniel Smith and then you'll get a similar color to that which is so beautiful. That's one of my favorites. And then this one here is uh, from this Derwent, I'm not sure. Uh, I, I'm not sure but it's a pretty similar color as well you can see how uh, powerful that color is as well and you can just water that down if you want a lighter uh, version of it but again it's in that same gray green color family and then I am just swatching this here as well this is the Daniel Smith duochrome lapis sunlight this is one of my favorite colors but you can see how much greener this is so the others definitely are on the gray green side um, and I'm just thinking now I should have actually swatched the Prismacolor, the grey green light because that, that is one of my favourites and that would probably work here too. So these pastels are going to be in a video coming up, a pastel haul and I'll talk a little bit more about it and give you a sneak peek at the end but um, this is from the Mount Vision Pastel Company. And this is a pretty similar one as well. It's a really beautiful one. This is the De La Rowney uh, one. And I also really love, so all of these pastels here that I'm showing you, I really love. Um, hopefully you can see the numbers there as well. I'll try and link uh, what I can below. Um, that's a Sennelier one. And then this is an Art Spectrum one as well, which is really nice. Um, but these you can see these are a lot more blue green uh, like a more aqua -y. they're not um, this gray green but um, I really love that just that whole sort of color situation going on there um, so the next thing I did here um, and this was just something that I kind of wanted to do and to show you um, when I was first starting watercolors I used to just get the Canson watercolor pads from Walmart and they're like five dollars and then I would just use those and swatch colors and you know work on like color uh, building exercises so trying different palettes out seeing if this worked seeing what would happen if this mixed with this and that's how you get really you know uh, you get a good handle on color what they'll do and what you like mixing as well so I highly recommend you know little things like this and um, and yeah definitely getting some cheaper watercolor paper and just uh, working on you know color mixing uh, palette building and those types of things as well so
okay so this is where we start to you know we've kind of had a play with the color now we can kind of implement the color in paintings and in different ways so one of the ways that I really wanted to try this color uh, is kind of in a grisaille technique so I've been looking at oil painting videos and I'm really interested and inspired by classical painting techniques and oil painting techniques but I mainly work in watercolor so I wanted to see if I can use um, the grisaille technique but with this kind of vadaccio or like vadai color the green gray color so um, yes so that's what I am doing here so I was actually really excited about this I've been thinking about this for quite a while so I wanted to pick a painting uh, from the old masters so I picked Rembrandt's um, girl in the window so this is of a young girl and I just really love the moodiness of the painting the um, sort of the playfulness and just comfortable uh, friendly um, uh, you know the the way the girl is like she's quite playful and cheerful and um, yeah so and then you've got this really beautiful you know the dark window sort of background now obviously his painting is like life-size and um, so this is a lot smaller and it's in oil you know this is in watercolor and his is in oil so like I'm not going for an exact um, replica or anything like that I just want to try out these uh, techniques and one of the things that I really um, appreciate about sketchbooks is when you're trying a new technique and you're not sure if it's going to work or things like that I really get nervous about doing it on a like a piece of paper that is not um, bound into a sketchbook because I feel like then it's more like a finished painting so I really like to just try things in sketchbooks and that way I know you know this it's straight away kind of like oh this is not a painting just you know just relax and um, it's just closed back into your book at the end of the day so um, but yeah so the um, what the grisaille technique is is um, an underpainting of the of whatever your you know your subject is in grey so um, I am like you can see doing the underpainting with this um, grey green which is um, more of like the Vadai colorway um, and um, what I'm doing is I'm leaving the white so I'm leaving the highlights white because it is watercolor and we want to preserve those highlights um, that is staying white and then anything that's going to be darker um, so basically I'm painting in shadows with this color I am leaving the highlights and I just want um, the all the shadows to be created there and what I you know wasn't sure of so you can see this is the pencil um, Karen Dash Technolo that I used uh, but I wasn't sure you know um, how this would translate and you know would it work and I picked the um, this grey green because uh, there's a lot of red as we'll, we'll look at in a minute there's a lot of red in um, the painting in Rembrandt's painting and so red you know green is the opposite to red but this is a very soft um, a soft green and so I wanted to see if that would sort of bring um, like a, a bit of a luminous quality you know as those glazes uh, go through and the other thing that I wanted to show you here so we've we've done quite a few matryoshkas on the channel and um, we've talked about you know building your skills slowly and so we started with beginner matryoshkas and then we did some more advanced ones and then the next step will be you know painting like faces so um, this is something hopefully we can do more of as I so um, you've got to allow this to dry as well but um, before we do this next step but hopefully we can do more of this in the future this is just kind of me um, you know slowly getting into it and then as I I didn't do you know some steps on camera because I am just still trying to figure it all out but um, yeah so uh, so once it's all dry 
um, you can go back in and start your painting so I started with the simpler parts which is the background here and um, what I am not trying to do is I do not want just a smooth wash here I want um, lots of different colors different textures so you know watercolor is a um, I, I don't I, you know it, it can be a very a beautiful medium a very you know transparent and smooth medium but I really um, I really love the texture of oils so I want to be able to sort of create some of that with the watercolor so you can see here that I do like I'm going into dark browns I'm going into like a violet earth so um, could put more drum type colors and just creating uh, I think someone just didn't get a try so um, uh, yeah so I am trying to create all those different elements and to create that atmosphere um, just by uh, layering and blending and mixing the colors in different ways so while I'm doing this we'll go kind of over the mixes and the colors that I used but just while you're kind of watching uh, this I wanted to just quickly go over what it says on the Windsor & Newton website about this colour. So they said it, it used to simply be known as powdered slate, which I think is really beautiful. Um, slate is full of wonder and surprises and its description as grey is somewhat inaccurate, something that David Batchelor explains on in his book, The Luminous and the Grey. And the way grey offers a hidden range of colours and responses. In truth, slate can vary in many colours, including shades of green, black, purple, and brown. Um, in Wales, it is lilac, whereas over the hill, it can be heather red. Um, other Welsh quarries produce willow, sage green, um, sea green, sage, and even bronze. Um, and then it's very interesting. So it goes into why it's named after Davy. So he was uh, an apprentice to. John Cotman, who, as we know, like the Windsor and Newton, has the Cotman range. Um, and then they kind of tie it into another, um, another artist, uh, Hamilton Finley, and his wife collaborated on an interactive artwork, a poetic garden in Stony Path uh, in Edinburgh, having first moved there in 1966. They called it Little Sparta and they said it's more than a garden, it is a heterotopia, a world within a world, encapsulating Finley's aesthetic sensibility, combining sculpture and landscape based poems with words written directly onto stone. Um, in this story of Davies Grey, there's a poetic resonance through this colour's associations with Henry Davy and Davies' architectural etchings of Suffolk. Um, so he obviously must have painted this area where they have this garden and then uh, Finley's Little Sparta where words are etched onto stone such as slate leaving the natural qualities and beauty of this ancient rock unmodified to speak for itself. So it's a really lovely, um, okay, really lovely but let me just get back to what I'm showing you here. So um, there's, you can see there's like a lot of this like vermilion type colour in uh, in the painting so it's on that that whatever that th thing is at the side and then her hair the cheeks the eyes you can see there's quite a lot of the this color around the eyes even in the nose the shadow under the nose so um, and the arms so yeah so um, we are trying to sort of also create like that um, I'm trying to figure out like some of those colors how they can work uh, with the watercolor so I have been using the smalt blue as my blue which is also a Windsor and Newton blue and then I am using the uh, the Daniel Smith organic vermilion as the vermilion color and then uh, Daniel Smith French ochre as well as my ochre um, 
which I, I've talked about a lot because I love it because of its transparency. It's not a heavy ochre. It's a very light and sheer ochre, which I really uh, enjoy about, you know, that type of a, like a, I don't want a dense uh, neutral or if that makes sense. So I don't mind like the, uh, um, like more pastel colors being opaque, but some colors I really like that that uh, softer quality so then in the cheeks here I'm using um, from this palette that I'm working with here it's the uh, cr from creamy pigments and it's the um, pink color KW Arts also has this color but you can use like a, a potter's pink as well or a Thulite um, and so I'm just kind of putting in those colors and again, you can see that I'm building everything up quite slowly. So I am also mixing the smalt and the French ochre and using that for the skin color. So this is a fairly limited palette um, and we'll kind of see exactly which colors at the end. But um, yeah, I am just uh, going um, fairly slowly so I do this over several layers I don't just kind of try and get all the face in at once and I like to um, remix different areas and add little different mixtures so I am kind of leaving the highlights around the top of the cheekbones under the eyes there and then I just actually um, get some water here and I just blend that out with water so uh, to let that kind of soften together but not uh, be too heavy and I'm also using that pink color where I could see pink on her uh, arms and uh, the, the they must have got to try then the arms um it's like six o'clock in the morning and they're downstairs watching Australian football so or like Aussie rules or something so um Let's see, uh, yeah, so the arms, well, probably the most difficult thing of this whole thing was the hand and the arm there. I actually probably worked on that quite the most. You can see there I'm also using the pink color with the organic vermilion and I am putting this in her hair where I could see the red highlights as well. So you can also use a potter's pink. Um, and you can also mix Potter's Pink with Shell Pink to get a similar sort of a muted pretty pink. So yeah, and you can see that I didn't really film a lot of that because just I wasn't sure enough what I was doing to film it. So I was just really um, turned the camera off and I was concentrating on that. But um, yeah, so that is that's kind of what I was doing then I took this little tiny brush so this is a Raphael fresco it's a long brush I think I just showed it in one of the recent videos but um, um, this is like a, a double zero I'd say brush and um, I'm just using you can see like I'm mixing uh, parts of the smalt parts of the organic vermilion and parts of the french ochre and i'm just kind of mixing different ratios uh, depending how i want that shadow to look um, i can also mix in a little bit of the violet so i think the one in that palette is the violet iron glimmer from creamer uh, and then yeah that's pretty much um, just slowly uh, building that up um, it, you can see I'll kind of show you in a minute but like in some of the painting like especially in the background I used the um, the brown that's actually one of my browns and it is a really dark so like the darkest brown that you have mixed with the shimmer iron glimmer um, you can get that from I first found it from Wallace and Seymour um, which is hard to get and you can also get it from KW Arts on Etsy you could also use just a black um, or like a just a pearlescent um, a pearlescent white with a black or something like that as well 
just adding a little bit of the pearlescent uh, watercolor to a, to a very dark brown as well and I really like that for the background I think it makes just just makes it really pretty uh, but I didn't use that for her hair for her hair I just used the um, Daniel Smith Van Dyke brown and for her face you know, I didn't want um, sparkles there but this is um, so these are the colors that I used the first one was like is like an, the art graph mixed with the shimmer iron glimmer the second one is the um, brown that we just talked about. The third one is the um, violet iron glimmer from Crema. The fourth one is my one and it's a pink pipe stone mixed with a pearlescent white. And then we had the Daniel Smith Organic Vermilion. And then we have the uh, Daniel Smith French Ochre. And then this is the Windsor & Newton Smalt. And then I also used, which I don't know if I really showed here, but I also used a little bit of the Schmingga Ice Blue to mix into some of the uh, skin mixtures as well. And I did use the white as well. So you'll see on my desk, um, there's a white, I can't remember. I'll try and link it below, but it's in the, like a ceramic container. It's really beautiful and it's handy to have there because I use that um, to mix with quite a bit. And then this is the uh, one that we're talking about today, the Davies Grey. So, yeah. Okay, so let's see. Um, I'm just showing you here. So um, to neutralize a color, you know, it's always said to mix uh, opposites, so blue and orange. Um, but you can see here that I have a blue that leans purple. So small blue is is not a true blue. It's it's got a lot of purple in it. And then my organic vermilion is an orange that leans very red. So red and purple are right next to each other. So you can see that that doesn't really neutralize. It more makes a muted purple. So. Um, what I what I add to that is the French ochre and then um, when you mix all those things in different degrees you are going to get different results but you can see here that I also added the um, the violet the violet glimmer there and um, what I'm going to kind of show you here is just a few of the different muted uh, mixes that I put into the painting and so this is really important to kind of work on learning these more subtle mixes. So you're not just using the um, paint straight out of the tube, but you're creating the sort of the exact um, right, you know, amount that you need for that painting, if that makes sense. So you can see here, and, and this is what I was saying about that I used to go through just reams of this, um, Walmart watercolor paper just trying these things out working out like how much water I needed how much pigment you know um, what it would look like when they're glazed over each other and all those different kinds of things um, yeah and even trying out different brushes and seeing how the you know the brush will allow the water to, um, the watercolor, you know, the pigment to release onto the paper uh, in different ways as well. So it's really interesting and it does sort of take work to figure that out. So, so here I am just showing you another way to mix this type of color. If you have a buff titanium and this is Daniel Smith Sleeping Beauty turquoise, but I know that Winsor & Newton has like a cobalt turquoise and Schmincke has one. So it's not the cobalt teal, the brighter one. It's the more muted, a uh, little bit darker version of that. Um, and so mixing that with a buff titanium makes pretty much a pretty close um, match there as well. You could also try like the French ochre with a blue. Um, and then, yeah, maybe adding a bit of white to that as well or something. Um, what am I doing here? So this was just the violet, um, violet iron glimmer with the pink color as well. So like a violet earth 
and Potter's Pink, something like that, like I put more on Potter's Pink. But yeah, so I will, so we just have, I'm kind of showing you there the um, progression and hopefully if you've been following along, like you can go back to the Matryoshkas and try just working on the faces if you want. Um, for one, because they're just kind of smaller and, um, you know, you could put a few on a page. So the next thing that I wanted to do was, well, actually, I'm going to put this in another video because you might just want to reference this video. Um, but this was kind of like a cool down for me. So after I uh, painted, it was quite like, um, you know, any time doing something new is a little bit stressful and you kind of like breathe in and then you don't breathe until you finish. So I like to kind of just uh, do something simple and fun at the end of it. Um, but yeah, this is going to be in the pastel hall and um, I think we just got a, we just got a point. <laughs> um, so, and then we do still have the um, old masters palette and the handmade watercolor palettes to swatch but um, just because I've been making the watercolors I haven't had time to do swatching videos they're quite um, time consuming so let us know if you use this color if you you know have any favorite colors that are similar to this and I will see you in the next video bye